Yo, what's going on, man? It's your boy, New Face. We are live at Giorgio's for another episode of The New Style. And today I have a very special guest, my brother DJ T. Lewis, man. One of the world's greatest DJs, if you look on an Instagram. And he got a lot of reasons why he could say that. My brother been doing his thing. We're going to learn about his new project, Don't Sleep, and the legend that he DJs for. And they just did a phenomenal show at the Yankee Stadium on the birthday of hip hop. So we're going to learn about that on today's episode. Let's go. Phew. Wolverine, 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 put that bean, could they clean? Yo, we are back, man, with another special episode of the new style. I have a very special guest in the building, man. One of my personal favorite DJs. And when I say that, I'm not talking about on Instagram. I'm not talking about when I see it on TV. I'm talking about when New Face was there in the club, really spinning records, really seeing the people have a great time. And be on Instagram playing some new music that we're going to talk about, but he be doing his thing. And honestly, I think he's the most humblest guy ever because we're going to get into it because he can really talk his shit. I see he got on Instagram, world's greatest DJ, but we're going to find out why. Today we got my brother DJ T. Lewis in the building. My brother was hopping, baby. Man, welcome to Giorgio's, fam. Hey, man, it's a beautiful story, man. It's Love amazing. It. I like it, bro. And we actually got this new shoe wall because you, you're our, our guest today. This wasn't here a couple weeks ago. I like this. So we wanted to make sure I got a new face rug. We got this Giorgio's here so you feel like somebody. We got ice breakers, water, rap star, energy drink in the building for our very special guest. So I want to let the people know. Um, let the people know where you're from. I'm originally from Jackson, Mississippi, man. Born and raised from the North, man. The North the Jack. So I'm a hip hop fan. So when I think Mississippi, I think Creed, I think David uh, Banner, I think uh, my brother Carlos Miller, man. Who? What's some other names that need to be coming up when somebody say Mississippi besides T. Lewis? When they think of Mississippi, they need to think of my brother Lil Lonnie, man. He rest in peace. Mm -hmm. That was an artist I was working with out of Jackson. We did amazing numbers. We were on a great run. Um, unfortunately, he had an untimely death, and you know. Well, I know you. I you did. definitely got to be out here making them proud and, and continuing the vision. Oh yeah, that's my. That's like that's that's one of the main influences, man. Because there was, you know, a lot of this move to Atlanta was in part of helping his career. But gotcha. I mean, when you think of Mississippi, man, we've been so under the radar that you know it's a lot of stuff that goes on. Like we got an artist there now by the name of Nico. He's doing amazing, bro. I'm talking about visual talent on um, YouTube and stuff like yeah. that, they major. I'm talking about crazy, got a crazy fan, oh, baby, man, no travel. Tap into him, man. Yeah, you Nico, first. Um, I got my man Coke, he did the intro to my um, my um, album, Don't Sleep. Uh -huh. I pretty much use him for all of my projects. Yeah. Um, let me think, man, We, I, I want to mention somebody before that a lot of people can remember, The Joker. Oh, nah, I remember that name. Yes, yes The Joker is from Mississippi. Yeah, you feel okay. what I'm saying? I didn't know that. I was, if, you, if they go back and look on YouTube, we're going to put this we, on there. I did a two week, I did a project film called Two Weeks Numbers. It's going to be one of the But Joker was already doing crazy numbers, yeah, bro. Okay. Out of Mississippi, you feel what I'm saying? And of course, we got our legends like, you know what I'm saying? Boo Rossini, Kamikaze, you know what I'm saying? I remember um, Boo Rossini because he on the cover of my concentration camp with Young Glee, CeeLo, yeah, Boo yeah, yeah, Rossini. Yeah. Man, that concentration yeah. Camp, man. So we've had that that run, you yeah. know. Then I also, you know, speaking of Mississippi, I gotta give them much respect to the legendary Malcolm Ray. Oh yeah, see. I see that's the thing. That's, that's right in the heart of Jackson. You feel what I'm saying? So let the people know about that. Exactly. That's what we're here for. If you don't know about Malcolm Records, Malcolm Records is responsible for some of your most favorite gospel tunes. Mm. You hear what I'm saying? I'm talking about one of the most legendary labels that's been around for the test of time. You feel what I'm saying? Based right out of Jackson, Mississippi, man. Mm. You feel me? I'm talking about catalog is insane. A, a majority of your Southern gospel music comes from that label. You feel what I'm saying? Shout out to the Couch family. You feel what I'm saying? Well, man. yeah, man, you know. That's what we're here for, to learn about the history, man. And stuff that we didn't know. A lot of people call me a hip hop historian and all that, but it's not about what I know. It's really about what I've learned. And yeah. that's what I do 
and try to show people and teach people. But it looks like I'm telling them, but I literally probably just learned something and I just shared instantly. And they're like, oh, he know all the gym. No, I probably just learned it. You know, like one that. thing I can say about New Face is New Face gonna ask the right questions and he listen well too. Yes, indeed. You always, every time we've always had an encounter, you always talk and you make sure that when you talk, you listen in return, bro. Yeah. And I can respect that about you, bro. One That's thing I, I learned, because I learned that God gave us um, two ears and one mouth. We're mm. supposed to listen twice as much as we talk. Mm. A lot of people talk, 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 and they probably talk themselves out of a blessing and talk themselves out of a lot of room. So I learned to be a fly on the wall and just, just soak up the energy and learn. And that's where I'm at. And now we talk about the DJ and culture, and you're a DJ. How did you become a DJ out of Mississippi? Who did you see, or what were you looking at to inspire you to DJ? Or did, was that the first choice, with, or was rap, you know, rap a choice? Or was it straight DJ? I'm going to be shot. real, man. I did not think about ever being a rapper mm -hmm. because I felt like where I was from, it was so real. Mm -hmm. And the rappers that I was listening to was telling real life stories. You feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And I wasn't living that real. So <laughs> yeah. I had to let that be. You feel me? Like yes. I was listening to some, like, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to, like I said, I had Boo. David Banner, Banner was speaking that real back then. Hey, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like Cam Cos and them, like Queen Boys, all of them, like everybody that was rapping back then, they was speaking that real, bro. So me, I'm sitting back like, nah, then I'm listening to, you know what I'm saying? Like I tell people, Mississippi is influenced a lot because of we are, I feel like we are the center of the South. Yeah. And the reason why I say that is because we surrounded by Memphis. We're three hours from Memphis, okay. two hours from New Orleans, six hours from Dallas, Seven Combo. hours from Houston. We three uh, we three and a half hours from um from like um Birmingham, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know what I'm saying? They make us six hours from Atlanta. You feel what I'm saying? So we right Combo. there in the middle. We just it, we 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 take everything yeah. in. Not to even mention the other major parts of Louisiana, like you know what I'm saying, your Shreveports and Baton stuff Rouge. like that, Baton Rouge, yeah. all of that surrounds us. So we take in all of that culture. So when I was growing up, bro, I was really listening to so much down south music and the Florida music played in it. But on the DJing side, we had DJs back home that were like in this culture. And one of them is um, DJ Finesse. Okay. Um, he's the president of the core DJs. He's like my big homie. Wow. He was one of the people that influenced me. He had a mix show. On the radio, kind of hip hop shop, Mississippi shop. radio. Yeah. Okay. But finesse also used to go back and forth to New Orleans when I was younger. Okay. So bro used to have like a radio show in New Orleans by day. By night he was in Jackson. He owned a teen club. He had a regular club. Like he was the DJ. Then that's when I had my other big homies. You know what I'm saying? Fingerprint. Okay. I had uh, Scrap Dirty. Mm -hmm. He went to Jackson State. He's from Chicago, but his family is from Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And you know what I'm saying? Like I can tell people, Mississippi, Chicago, we got that tie together because there's, there's family right there. Okay. Okay. So all these DJs are very technical DJs. Yeah. You feel me? I got my dog AZ at Black. He in the club, rocking the hood clubs, but he can he can scratch. He on techniques in the hood club, killing. Shit. I'm talking about like I'm talking about a fight will break out, but he's, he's on techniques, cut. cutting it with my dog with D Line. Yes. I'm talking about real life, bro. So I, I witnessed this and I saw real DJing, bro. So when I saw that, it made me want to be a part of it. I started off as a promoter, bro. Around what age? 14. Wow. Okay. So what happened, I realized, I threw a birthday party. Mm -hmm. And my dad realized at the time that, yo, like this boy got like some popularity, which we already knew because I was involved in a lot of stuff at a young age. Mm -hmm. So we just took that and ran with it. I was seeing that all the older people go to the club when I was younger. Mm -hmm. So I used to be like, hey, what we gonna do? So I was like, you know what? I'll, the place where I had my birthday party, my 14th birthday party, I tried to get the ballroom there. And they wouldn't let us do it. So we went and rented another venue. And that venue, we locked in with that one venue for like two years. And after every home football game, I was throwing a high school party. As the promoter. As the promoter. And I was hosting on the mic. So I had my 14, partner, DJ 15. Dirty. Yeah, it's like 14, 15, 16, yeah. all through high school. So everybody knew me as the boy that threw the parties, but my dad was a police officer. So they, so the parents felt safe bringing their kids to my party. You feel wow. what I'm saying? Because we got police in there. In Miss, in, wow. in, this, in the, this in the city, you feel what wow. I'm saying? That's so I, I was getting into that. I was DJing and my granddad made God rest his soul. He was suggesting one time, my partner, DJ Dirty, I love him to death. I tell you this story a lot. I booked him as my DJ. And because I used to book my homies as DJs, you feel what I'm saying? Because I used to, we used to do the team clubs together and all that. So 
my homie, he started being late and not coming and stuff like that. And my granddad suggested one time, he's like, bro, you already on the mic with your parties, why don't you DJ? I put a plan together, bro, because it's I, I felt I feel like, bro, you can't just jump into something. You gotta put a plan together. Yeah, yeah. So I was like a senior in high school when this happened. So by the time it got to my sophomore year in college, I was putting the plan was coming out that I was gonna be a DJ. DJ. So this when you it have happened. any equipment of your own? No, I had no equipment. I went, oh, I'm gonna tell you how so let me tell you how the hustle went. So I didn't even have any equipment, right? Okay. So boom, when I decided I was gonna make the full jump, I got a refund check. From college, college. Yeah, I took a refund. I maxed it out. I maxed the <laughs> refund check out, bro. I took the refund check, and I went about my equipment with the refund check. I never had got a refund check ever, bro. It was like, the you know what? Of it, that was the universe, man. But I still owe them people though. But still, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you talking about? Up, but Sally May still looking. <laughs> yeah, right? man. Y'all look, 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 man. Look, I ain't made no hey, money. Still, I ain't got no job. <laughs> it's rough right now. You feel what I'm saying? So, so you, so you. Promoted the party and eventually became the DJ for it. Did you have a DJ name at that point? No, my name has always been my name. Your name is always because been my, my parties. Name. They'd be like, "You going to T. Lewis party?" My name has always been T. Lewis. That's hard. Yeah, so it was like my parties back in the day on the flyer. I used to be so cheesy, bro. I used to make the flyers. I used to go get color paper, bro. I used to go <laughs> make the flyer, print print four flyers on one on one piece of paper, cut them, uh. Get them to my oh, partners. We man. going school to school, hand to hand. I'm telling you, bro, I'm real life involved in this life in this culture, man. I really man. was on the computer on Microsoft Word. You feel me? T. Lewis Productions or T. Lewis Presents. Yeah. Put whatever, put some little dancing people on there. Yeah, I was really outside. Now, like was that. there any any DJs? You know, you named some that were kind of giving you some tips too, as well as DJing, or were you just like, I'm gonna fill this out and figure it out myself as far as record selection, as far as the timing of it. You know, there's the BPM or mixing this song, this is what you just playing. Like, I'm just playing with the people going off of or what I like. What uh, was your process? To be honest, I was such a student, bro, that I, I, I sat back and learned. I think what, what a lot of DJs now are missing is the fact of is the art of communication. Um, they have the ability to sit back and watch and imitate, but they don't have the ability to understand. And the reason why I say that is because so you can sit back and watch somebody mix Boosted White Me Down with Glorilla um, uh, um, F and F. Okay. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't understand why they mix this song together, when you do it, it's not going to hit the side. So that's why I tell people, a lot of DJs, you got to have that conversation, bro. So. I was always a student because, like I said, I was always into the culture. So I was always watching DJs. I remember I would go to like these, we would have these award shows because the gospel culture and the blues culture is very big in Mississippi. Mm -hmm. So we had a Mississippi musical, the Jackson Musical Awards like, at least. And I would go and I'd just sit next to the band and watch the band play. Even though I played in the band, but I'd just sit next to the band. I'd sit next to the drum, I'd watch the techniques. So a lot of times I would watch how they would sync stuff how they would sync songs the and, and the timing and stuff. And honestly, I was involved with the marching band at such a young age that my timing is a little bit different. It was really honestly a God-given talent that I got, bro. So I took what I saw, my God-given talent, and I went and asked questions. Mm. Instead of saying, hey, teach me this, I went and asked questions like, so if I mix this song together and mix this song together, what you think it sound like? And then so, now, you know, I, I was around my homie, like my partner DJ Finesse, he had a studio right down the street from the college I went to Jackson State. And man, honestly, bro, I would pull up on him, like I would get out of class, I'd be like, hey, bro, can I come down to the studio? He'd be like, yeah. Man, i go down to the studio, he'll have me, he'll go pull some wax out, and he'll be like, here, go have it. Yeah. I'll never forget, he pulled out C Murder, um, Fuck Them Other Niggas. Mm, shout out to KLC who produced that. Big bro, KLC, I love yeah. you. So I'll never forget, he pulled him out and he was like, here, have it. So I was learning how to beat Jugger. And that was, I was bringing the, the records back. And he just shut the door. He just shut the door. But that was, that was what I was on, you feel what I'm saying? So it was more so a question-based thing with me. And then once I figured out my own out. style, that's when I started incorporating the things that I learned. Mm. You know, And I think that's what makes me such a DJ because it taught me how to think as well mm -hmm. as a DJ. Wow. Now, and, and that's DJing. So what about musical influences what type of music were you listening to personally like your personal favorites outside of mississippi what were some of your things you remember listening to 
I love listening to everything, honestly, bro, because I, to be honest, me living in Mississippi, bro, I never thought I was gonna leave Mississippi the way that I have. Mm -hmm. I'm blessed, bro, you know? And it's like, I remember, I, I tell people this all the time, it's so funny, bro. I be like, man, you know, when I was growing up, bro, um, I traveled to these, all these different cities now, and I'm like, bro, the only thing that I can relate to these cities is what I used to watch. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. So yeah. I, I grew up watching Boys in the Hood and Minister Society, and you know what I'm saying? All the West Coast when movies. You get to South Central. You get to South like Central, you feel me? Like, oh, I, I see. I'm, I'm sitting up here looking at all this. I'm like, okay, then Randy Dunn is, oh my yeah. God. Like, I'm, I'm, but at the same time, that music that I'm listening to on there, like, I'm, it's so crazy me being down South. Like, I'm a Jay Z fan, yeah. I'm a Dipset fan. I love the that that whole New York yeah, flavor because how they can rap and they can paint the picture of what it looked like. And we saw it so yeah, much. Yes. But I mm. love Southern hip hop. I feel like when I was growing up, I mean, I I heard it so much, it was such an influence to me. But the sound, just the whole cadence, just the whole feeling that we put into Southern hip hop, mm -hmm. is totally different from everywhere else. So mm -hmm. that's how. Everything has influenced me from the north to the west to gospel. Like I said, I play drums. So I played in the marching band. So I'm very well diverse with music because we play. Shout out to my band director, Joe Mitchell, my high school oh, wow. band director. He just passed recently. Right, but dude. he had us, I'm talking about, we were playing Total Praise yeah. from Total Praise. <laughs> we'll go play uh, um, um, like um, Overture for Ben Hur. Yeah. Then that's when we'll play the regular rap tunes. We were very diverse getting ready for college. So that right there opened my music class so much because we were playing these songs in the band. What was I going to go do? Let me go hear the real song. Yeah. I want to hear the real song so I can see what the drum part is because I play Creation snare drum. Of it. So now mm -hmm. we can go back and put this real drum part with the band mm -hmm. drum part so it can sound similar to the song. You feel man, what I'm saying? Take note, man. Take note. Sit up there and watch and learn and then you'll put yourself in a position to be one of the greats because those are the ones that took notes and listened. Definitely. And, and we talk about, you know, you, you got a new project out and we talking about DJs as well, but like, tell me if I pull these out, like, what did you know about this gentleman right here or that movement? Where you, where, where Clue! Your radar? <laughs> There's a storm, man. So listen, growing up, right, I'll never forget Clue, I apologize. I was never able to buy one of your tapes, you feel mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because that was just not coming down south. Yeah. But I was definitely a fan. And a lot of songs that I downloaded off of LimeWire. They came from him. His tapes. Because I was a Dipset fan, I was into that up north music, like that, like that, like that New York music. Yeah. So, like, if I seen like it was like had like clue name next to it, it like it was you off the end of his tape, I was getting it. I'm talking about the drops. I'm hearing it all day, everything. It really influenced me to want to do mixtapes, for real. But, mm -hmm. cause, but like honestly, because I think like. I can't even say I first heard a South DJ do a mixtape. I mm -hmm. think like I heard South DJs on the radio first mm -hmm. because of where I'm from gotcha. and the range of radio. You gotcha. feel what I'm saying? Before I knew um, New York was known for their mixed show prisons, yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew about the Down South prisons on the uh, mix shows. Okay. So when I heard of like those DJs like Clue and them like that, like it was from them doing mixtapes. Mm -hmm and them like i never even honestly understood what it was growing mm -hmm. up i was just a kid in high school downloading music off limewire off limewire because that's where i knew to get my yeah, music from them, them blank cdrs yeah man listen bro you know what i'm saying i ain't gonna lie man 50 pack of man listen i was the guy because i had the plug with the radio with the uh, music guys too bro yeah. so they were bringing me like the cds man i was look i was i was healing the hood bro oh man I, if i had it my neighborhood had it bro yeah. you feel me because i was the guy with the music i was throwing the parties yeah. i'm making mp3 cds an hour man wow so if we if we talk about djs and, and doing it for the culture and and if you were to just put your personal favorite not top of greatest but your personal favorite DJs, what would those three be? Don Cannon. Mm -hmm. Affiliates. Oh, uh, I gotta go. I got I got so no order. Yeah. Don Cannon, DJ Mr. Rogers. Ooh. Um uh Rod Smooth mm. from New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Um of course my big homies from the crib. I'll put them against a lot of folks. DJ Finesse. Yeah. Uh, scrap dirty if you don't know who scrap dirty is you need to go look them up yeah. uh violator all-star you feel me slum village all that go look them up but um yeah so 
Uh, let me think. I ran across so many great DJs across my time. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, I humbly respect every DJ and mm -hmm. their position. Like I got to pick Jeff. Jeff has definitely got to be him. If I had to do a Mount Rushmore, Jeff, you know what I'm there. saying, is on there. Rogers, for what I saw and him, what I saw him do for yeah. the culture coming out of Texas as a young guy. You feel what I'm saying? And it's interesting the ones you named, like a Mr. Rogers, Rod Smooth, Don Connor. Which connects to you are those are great DJs, but they produce as well. Yeah, they produce some classic music. Jazzy Jeff. Yes, I see. <laughs> and, that, and that leads me to your project, uh, Don't Sleep. Yes. Oh um, man, the one thing I want to bring out. I got a new face was there. Don't sleep. No. But oh, I I'm gonna say, Lord. I want to talk about the connection, and maybe you'll get it. There's a connection between Don't Sleep and this Outcast because on here, claiming true, it's a brother. By the name of Big Rude, mm. it was an intro. <laughs> so let the people know, because when I listened to Don't Sleep, one of the last voices I heard was this brother Big Rude. And for me personally, it's like when somebody drops a tape and they do something like that, and they add somebody of the culture or somebody important like a Big Rude, well, maybe somebody of this generation probably don't get it. Yeah. But there's a legion of people that do understand it and be like, that's hard. That's yeah. hard. So how did that process come to get him on there? And, and what was that about? And what was that important to you? Man, honestly, Don't Sleep is an emotional project, bro. And I, that's just me being real, bro. Mm -hmm. Don't Sleep was a project I put together, bro, feeling like that everybody was sleeping on me from DJing to, you know what I'm saying, um, producing, bro. Mm -hmm. And um, I was working on this project for like over like three years. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to put it out like twice. Mm -hmm. We lost it once. Um, just recently when we started tour, we lost the whole entire project. You know what I'm saying? I went in this project that you're hearing right now, I was literally from the time from April first all the way until the release date. I went and redid the entire project, made wow. new beats, sent them out, did new songs, came up with new concepts, everything, bro. Man, so and speaking of concepts, one of my favorite concepts is on there. Is maybe you'll see here. What we got here? Wolverine. <laughs> so, so let the people know why I would bring Wolverine out Wolverine, here. that's track seven, if I'm not mistaken. That's what? um my that was my first single off of Don't Sleep featuring Shot the, the God, God and my brother Scully. Come on. Man. Wolverine. man you gotta go wolverine this is what it means to go wolverine ladies and gentlemen this is what it means when he, when, look when when they, when they come out you need to be fearful of this guy right here so when you get ready to go wolverine they need to fear you so what was it like putting that song together and why was it called wolverine man honestly we were in the studio and i was playing beats and when i played the beat me shy and scully was in the studio when i played it shy looked at me and was like man what and we just let it play. And honestly, we were sitting in the studio and throwing over concepts and listening to no shot just screamed out. Man, this beat was crazy. He sat back and he was like, what did it mean? I said, what? And he kept saying, I said, that's the hit, bro. I don't know what it mean, bro, but I, we finna put a meaning to it. And just so happened, bro, it came together so class. Let me tell you. See, I'm a very, I'm very big on symbolism, bro. So this is Wolverine mean to y'all. Is what I just told you. But to me, you know what it mean to me? I feel like I'm the black sheep, bro. But I'm a wolf in dressed in sheep's clothes. Wolverine, you feel what I'm saying? So at the same time, it all is like it's it's so much it made me feel like I was doing the right thing, bro. Mm -hmm. And even to elaborate on Rube's situation, man, Rube's situation came about, like I said, it was just a lot of pain put into that project. And um each beat was made off of pure energy that hey, look, yeah. this is how I feel. Yeah. Each artist, they collabed well with it. Um, Rude was one of the first people I actually reached out to to do something on the project because, I, like I said, I was in Jackson, bro, and I had to, whatever was going on here, it resonated with me through the music and the visual outlets, which is movies, videos. Man, I just remember hearing Rude voice on ATL all the time. Then I remember, you know what I'm saying, growing up this to the dungeon, this then the outcast. Like I'm a huge outcast fan, just hearing his voice. So I was like, bro, I'm finna do my first real project. And I was like, bro, the only person I feel like they can tie the two together because of I feel like at the point that we're in in age right now, bro, people just trying to do this 
Like, everybody want to say they old, they old, bro. We not old, bro. You're not old. Just because you're 40, you're not old. Like, bro, listen. We got to tie the two together, bro. Because at the end of the day, the same story somebody got going on right now, Rube been through it, bro. And I just feel like can nobody else get that pain across yeah. like I wanted them to except for Rube, especially for people of age to listen to and they can tie them in. That's why he's the last voice that you hear. I got that. I got that person because, again, and you just said it, like Rube is somebody that I hold in the highest fucking regard. Like, like you've seen him. He works for Goody Mob. He's yes. the future. Offset has done it. But his base, the Dungeon family, the base. Yes. And this is a brother that... You don't see out here with gold chains, diamond brain dangling on Instagram saying I did this, but my my heart, the energy and what he's done, he's one of the greats. And so for you to recognize somebody like that, because I think you probably see that in yourself. Again, like Wolverine, like you don't see, you see Logan right there. Right. But Logan, goddamn, you make him mad, he like Hawk. Don't make you don't like me when I'm angry. Exactly. These come out. And this brother T. Lewis can make them things come out. <laughs> so we, and again, we we just yeah. So, gangsta grill. Do you remember your first gangsta grill? I'm gonna be real with you. The probably was my first gangsta grill. Dang. Him, 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 hold on. Uh, which one was first? Which one was first? Can't ban the snowman. Can't ban the snowman first. Yeah. So can't ban the snowman was definitely first. My first game tape was then can't ban the snowman. So I was probably in the beginning of yeah. in the beginning of the the, uh, the, uh, the era, but. These right here, you know, that, of course, that's gonna be my favorite series, man. Come Stop on, playing, man. man. I grew up off of that, man. My that that right there, that, yeah. that all those projects shape like like they they shape my life, bro. I tell Tune all the time, bro. Like growing up, bro, you used to talk to me so much, you don't even know it, bro. For real. So like, so so when I so I brought this out and we talking about DJs and this tape is with Lil Wayne. So we might as well. This this is about you, but I just cannot. It's go. cool. Come on, let's I do it. I can't. Cause how did this introduction come? Cause at this point, were, were you still doing the promoting? Or where were you at in life when this dropped? I was definitely promoting, definitely promoting parties. Yeah. I was still promoting parties. I didn't start DJing for real, for real until I got to college. Mm -hmm. So if I'm if I ain't mistaken, so how do we tie? From your life at this point with this drop to where you guys are lying and meet, how how does that how, how did this happen? All right, well during this time of Lil Wayne career, Tez was Tez was still in Jackson a little bit, but he was helping Wayne at the time. Mm -hmm. By this time, I already knew who Tez was. Tez knew who I was. I was playing in the band. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying at Jackson State. Mm -hmm. You feel me? As time goes on, you feel what I'm saying? Because this was. Probably I was still like I said I was still in high school, gotcha. so this was like two years, two two three years afterwards. By the time I get to college or whatever, um, you know. But that's honestly that right there, that project. Mm -hmm. First of all, everything Lil Wayne was so influential in my life because at the same time, and this ain't even I tell people this. This is not even me saying this. This is why honestly I feel like I got my job and I still got my job. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? It's because I'm I, I respect him as a artist first. Mm -hmm. I'm not not on a grouping nothing that it's real because at the end of the day I sat back I've been a fan since the beginning yes, so as I pay attention to him and his and how he works and how he does what he does bro you have to respect it bro you feel me you have to respect what he's built for himself and what he expects mm -hmm. for himself and that has made me feel the same way about myself you feel me you learn from that you, you learn from that you, you pick it up this yeah. energy you feel me yeah. so at this point in time I'm sitting back thinking like man you know I want I want to work with bro one day. I don't know what capacity, but I want to work with bro. Mm -hmm. To be honest, man, when I when I first went to college, bro, I wanted to be an A and R. Okay. You know, I, I really thought being a like I said, ne being a rapper never came to mind. Yeah. I really thought being a DJ producer was so far fetched, bro. But because you know, what I'm saying where I'm from, I used to tell people that, and they'd be like, man, look, you guys, you know what I'm saying? You know, it wasn't never nothing, no conversation of comfort. Yeah. So anyway get from here to me meeting Tez, Tez realized I was one of the biggest Lil Wayne fans ever. <laughs> like, you know, I had a sidekick that flipped open and it played a verse from I'm Me and it closed and it played like another verse from another song. Like, I was really a Lil Wayne fan, bro, cause I, like his words, bro, like, I'll never forget like my freshman year in college, bro, when I went to college. And uh, I'm an only child. I got um, siblings, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, Step siblings, but, it was me growing up. Yeah. So Wayne had a song that off of Louisiana. It was the project was called Louisiana. Oh, it came yeah. out mm -hmm. with Rod Smooth. He had a song on there called Alone. Mm -hmm. 
and I used to listen to their song so much. I'm talking about nonstop, 24 seven. Like my my best friend was my roommate, bro, and he'll tell you, like, bro, that boy. I still listen to it to this day, <laughs> yeah, bro, because it's, timeless. it's it's words that was you know what I'm saying relating to me about you know what I'm saying just the feelings, bro. So from that moment. Even before then, like I said, like I remember where I was at when the Carter 2 dropped, bro. You feel mm. what I'm saying? I remember the exact vehicle I was yeah, driving, what man. happened, bro. Like it was like that. Yeah. So I honestly started to model myself yeah. behind Wayne. The words you were hearing, the lifestyle, everything. And it wasn't so much as like trying to go be in the streets, but it was like, I, I'll never forget, like me getting, me getting my tattoos, honestly, mm -hmm. was like, I never get Wayne was like he got tattoos. It was an old interview. He was like I got tattoos. Let folks know I will never had no regular job. Oh, yeah, yeah. oh I bet for sure then. Yeah, that's the Mr. Ink Man. <laughs> tad me up. Come on, buddy. I'm finna go down tad, here. Tad tad tad. When I went when I first got my first tattoo, bro, it was so unreal, bro. Folks like people ain't getting tattoos, uh -huh. but this how real was. We were rocking tattoo sleeves, bro. You feel me? You like this is that the era, with the rock star era. The tattoo sleeves, wallet chain. Bro, yeah. when I pulled the tattoo sleeves off and I got real tattoos, folks like, hold on, man, this nigga really living really like this, bro. I'm like, bro, fuck this job, shit, bro. Like, I'm finna go you got do this. I want the tear. Yeah, <laughs> I just didn't want. I couldn't do the face yeah. and I couldn't do the neck because I was like, yeah. I ain't gonna rap. Yeah. Like, he gonna rap. I'm not gonna rap. Yeah. I'm gonna do X, Y, and Z. So I was telling the tune, um, not so much as telling the tune, but just in the sense of, you know, telling. Tez and Tune and the whole team, like, bro, this is what modeled me to be who I am right now mm -hmm. and how I got to work at the guy got. I'm watching videos and seeing Tune, like, always in the studio. Shit, I'm finna go always oh. practice DJing and go to the studio then. That's where I'm supposed to be at. Yeah. That's my safe haven, I right, bet. Cool. And that was honestly the influence and the drive that told me to tell Tez, hey, bro, I'm gonna be one DJ. Mm -hmm. And Tez looked at me and laughed and was like, boy, y'all ain't crazy as hell. Dang. And here we are. <laughs> Here we go. And, and class is later, cause, cause I, we just gonna go into the to the this guy. Where you was at when this came out? And Manny Fresh, man. What you know about this guy, Manny Fresh? Man, pray to my uncle. I love him to death. One of the hardest producers ever created in life. You hear me? Oh. The the sound man. That's what I'm gonna call him. Cause he man. gonna give you that rhythm with his sound. He gonna give you about a good eight to ten oh, yeah, yeah. on the cool. <laughs> but there ain't no big sounds, and he didn't put it together and made it go crazy. One of the most one of the most classic, and I say this because where I'm from, one of the most classic Manny Fresh beats of all time that I'm gonna say that people underrate. Big Baller. Oh, come on. Man. I played in the band, so I got to do that. Yeah. So let me go. Juvenile 400 Degrees. Where I was at when this dropped? I was in the jack. I was riding around my big cousin, Daria. Shout out to him. i never forget it. Me, we were going back and forth to the city because I got family in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. i never forget it. Popped off. We were sitting around here listening from top to bottom. But then when 400 Degrees dropped, after 400 Degrees dropped, I remember where I was at when Turk dropped, when T's, Bows, and Breeze. I remember where I was at with B. Jizzle. Come on, man. Stop playing with me, man. I'm really living like that. He, he Hot boy. Get how you live, man. Get it how you live. Listen, I was little. I'll never forget being underage trying to go to Bebop by this, but I couldn't get it. So I had my cousin to go by this right here. High girl watching the video 37,000 times. You feel me? Hey. White t-shirt, tees, bows, with some fresh breeze. When they get too messed up, you go get the little white paint, put it on there. Oh, man. And then we go into this one. With the Audi. With the Audi, the block is hot. This right here changed the game right here. You feel so what I'm I saying? So when I tell you, this guy signed, and, and I know you was there, because it was Reginae's birthday party. Oh, yeah, and we was at the... Manny um, was DJing, yeah. too. Juvie was there. Two yeah. chains came, and I got the day. I, I think I did picture when we was up top in, in man, the booth. Man, that block Listen, is hot. Look, did this the one right here? Fuck the world. What's you that listen, that's what I've been to say. The world, you got fuck the world on here. Woo. You got Keisha. Man, come on, man. Oh, uh, of course, block is hot. Yeah. Hold on, it's one missing over here though. Uh oh, what you talking about? What you talking about? It's one missing on here though. Hold on. It might not have been on here. Nah, it wasn't on here. Was it it wasn't on here. It was um. It ain't lights out, is it? Grown man, boy. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That body snap, boy. You got them ones. Now this right here. Now we can talk about that week. one now too, man. A million in a week. Man, I never forget this driver. I I never forget this driver. I want to look on camera. I gotta say thank you, Tez, uh, mm. for Shout allowing me Tez, to be a part of this stuff and experience it from your point of view. Mm. Feel what I'm saying? And 
it couldn't have been a better point of view. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'll never forget when they hit this meal ticket. I text Tez, bro. We was all so excited, bro, because he called it. Tez was coming to the city. He was dropping mm -hmm. off shirts, promo shirts. He oh, was, man, y'all put this on. I'm talking yeah. about we were promoting. We were promoting at this time. I was still promoting and transitioning into DJing. Okay. So a lot of stuff that I used to do was promoter based. So I would still from like honestly, my first time coming to Atlanta uh -huh. was <laughs> crazy. I was 18 oh. years old. Okay. It was the grand finale of Club 112. Oh shit! Which one? The one I was still in on Cheshire Bridge. Bookhead. This was 2007. Oh yeah, still in Bridge. Yeah, yeah. Bridge. Yeah. Huh? Okay. So boom. Yeah. Wayne okay. was the host. Wayne was the host that night. Okay. Think back. Wayne was the host. Go back and look at the ticket. Wayne, Wayne was the host that night. Mm -hmm. That was like Wayne, like one of Wayne's first, first hosts first. here with around that time when he was, you know what I'm saying, becoming. Yeah. Like Carter three and drop and he's hey come on now. So this tour bus Wayne, you feel Ooh, me? Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I was there underage, 18 years old. I never forget it. Had the time of my life. Oh, you hear me? Man. Shout out to Club 112. I wasn't supposed to be in there, but oh, listen. But T Lou was there. I was there, like new face in that thing. Oh, I remember man. seeing Jermaine Dupree standing on the sofa with a wife beat on. Oh. It was four in the morning. They were keeping and, it open. And it somehow we just like remember these moments because when you were there, and that's what I tell people about, that's what New Face was there is about. Like I can look at these things. And remember exactly where I was at. You want to know something, New Face? Yeah. That moment, seeing that club like that, because mm -hmm. that's when I was young. I was a go-getter. I was trying to go see everything. Mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out every female in the club, what she was doing. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see every section. That night made me want to move to Atlanta. I always want to be a part of the club, but that night made that. It was yeah. like, nah, I got to be a part of this culture wow. here. Because that right there, that yeah. level of partying I saw yeah. was intense, people. And now I want to just get into like those new face was there moments for this brother right here. So the one that I kind of remember the most, most recently it was a day where T.I. dropped an album and Benny the Butcher dropped the album on the very same day. There was an album release party at Gold Room. And I think you held it down for both artists. Thank you, bro. And I remember you playing it. Cause I'm just like, it's Benny and we know how it's Benny. So the music is different. And I'm like, I always love to see how they gonna fit it in or if the DJ is gonna fit it in. Right. But man, this boy did his goddamn thing. Dropped the Benny record and also said, I wasn't really on the shit, Benny, but this, you got one here. Yeah. And then you played the new shit with him and Wayne and that shit, you brought it back about three times and I'm just looking at it. I got this shit on video and I'm like, oh, this shit fucking crazy. But I always remember this night. Cause it's like, it's, that's what I love about what I do. Cause I have all these memories in the phone and I don't know everybody, but yeah. when I link up with them and then they be like, I was there too. And then I'll pull out my phone like, oh shit, that, that was you. Yeah. They'll be like, that's me right in front of you. But we yeah. just didn't know each other type shit. So I got that moment. Then the other one, I get a call to come to gathering spot. Oh. And, and all they, they said, whatever you got with LeBron on it, bring it. And I don't know what the fuck. I just like, okay. Go and get Slam Magazine, uh, any Dime Magazine. Bass. <laughs> I'm looking at the Double XL. I remember Bron on the cover of that, and I get there. First brother I see is shout out to Amir Boyd, my brother DJ MLK, and this brother right here on the table spinning. And then again, I I, don't, I, I let them work, and I'm just watching the brooms. But I'm, I love seeing people vibe. But I'm looking at superstars over here, like LeBron. Dancing, having fun, nobody, no phones out, two chains with his friends and everything. That's the stuff that I love. So the fact that I'm able to see you command the room, brother, and as how humble you are and as much shit as you can talk, I want to just say thank you for that, for those memories. Thank you, bro. Shouting me out every time online. Um, your you, journey bro. has been beautiful. I see it. You, you, you're just getting started. I think Don't Sleep will wake somebody up. And I think, you know, you got going. So let the people know where they can find Don't Sleep at and what's coming next with Don't Sleep. Um, Don't Sleep, man, available on all platforms. Um, videos, we dropping videos. We just dropped a video to Wolverine. It's available on my YouTube, um, DJ T. Lewis. Um, like I said, videos coming from Don't Sleep. I'm thinking about releasing a deluxe because I still have songs available, you know what I'm saying? And I got a couple other collabs coming with some other artists. But it's just gonna be, um, to be honest, 
I'm gonna keep dropping until I wake y'all up. And when I wake y'all up, we're gonna keep dropping. Because by the time I wake y'all up, we're gonna be at a wave so big that it's gonna have to drop. We're gonna change the culture with this shit. You did? Because I'm telling people about, I, I remember collecting things like this. You and did. I'm telling people they sleeping on this little nigga right here. They you sleeping. Did. And this was back then. And I'm telling you, see how this is. They don't know who Wayne was, but I heard it then. He wasn't cussing then, but yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like yourself, this brother raised us. I seen it in him. You seen it in him. And now look where he is. Look where we are. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So definitely want to shout out to that. I also want you to let the, show the people your brand. You know oh, let's go saying? over here. Come on. Yeah, let's walk and talk with T. Luke. You feel what I'm saying? So basically what we got right here, I started a brand. It's Timeless Legends. But it's, as you can see, the most hated Timeless Legends. Mm -hmm. Now, what I, I'm going to explain this logo here, you feel Let's what I'm saying? So this logo here, this most hated logo right here, it stands for love. That's why you got this heart right here. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has a small chip on their shoulder. Just depends on how big it gets, you feel me? And I feel like this right here is the representation of that chip. Because we as people are some of the most hated people in the world. You feel what I'm saying? We hate each other so much. But that hate is really love. You get what I'm saying? That hate is really love. It's, it, it, you, they, they're not hating you because they don't like you. They're hating because they just, that's their way of showing love. We've been taught this shit. So I put it on a hat. I put it in a slogan for you. That's why you got this eight right here, because it's infinity, it's forever. But it's forever love. Hate is temporary, love is forever, most hated. At one time as legends, man. Come shop with your boy, you feel me? You too can be a timeless legend and spread love, not hate. You did. Let's go. Bam, you seen it here on the new style, man. Let's go. DJ T. Lewis, new face was there live at Giorgio's. Let's go. Yeah, okay, now they go. Shut the door. I got bread, but I ain't happy. I want more. Just send money to the feds and then pay money to the courts. You did rap shit like a sport. We are flipping back and forth. That's for sure. Damn, might eat your bitch like a course. And now I got a feeling. We never fussing when we fucking. She don't speak no English. I'm never sleeping. I be living all that shit. I'm dreaming. I had just. Nothing she kept sucking, she a fucking